Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are in this place, Lord. Mm. Fill my head, Lord, with your thoughts, and in my heart, Lord, fill it with your intentions. And let, let, let everything that you have intended for today take place, Lord. Lord, I pray for revelation in the word. Revelation and insight and understanding and knowledge and wisdom in your word, Lord. Pour it out, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you are with us. And let us just have a prayer, inner prayer right now, just for the people in who are at war right now in Ukraine and Russia. Let us just hold up the banner of peace of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Oof. Thank you, Lord. Um, so today I'm going to touch upon the subject of what does the compassion of Jesus looks like? Because we have a certain idea of what that means in regard to the carnal man. The carnal man has certain ideas about what compassion looks like. But in regard to Jesus, it looks very different. <laughs> I think most of us have noticed that by now, right? So I'm going to dig more into that. And everything, everything that the carnal try to hold on to right away, have you noticed that? Jesus will do everything so that we will get rid of that intention of holding on to something. Jesus actually will only wants us to hold on to him. Because the minute that we start to hold on to something, we lose his life. We lose the spiritual life, we lose the physical life, we lose the life that he called us to walk in, right? So let's move right away into that one. I'm in Mark 10, verse, uh, what's it say, 17. A rich man meets Jesus. As Jesus started on his way, I love these different uh, translations. I'm going to read them to you because... The more, the, the more translation that we read, the more deeper we dig into the word, right? So, anyway. As Jesus started on his way, a man came running up to him, kneeling down in front of him. <laughs> and he cried out, Good teacher, what one thing am I required to do to gain eternal life? This is, what, this is his request, right? Jesus responded, remember what his request is. Jesus responded, why do you call me good? Only God is truly good. Already here, Jesus is putting him in place, is rebuking him. He's, he's trying to bring forth conviction, a conviction of there's something that's not quite right with, with what you're thinking. Mm. Already, Jesus starts right away, right? He doesn't wait. He's right on top of us, right? He's like right in front of us all the time, isn't he? That's how I feel, anyway. You already know the commandments. Again, a rebuke. You already know. Why do you ask? Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give a false testimony, do not cheat, and honor your father and mother. It's interesting that Jesus is saying these particularly commandments to him. We don't know what's been going on in this rich young ruler. When you're young, you don't know very much. You think you know a lot, but you don't know anything. <laughs> because you haven't experienced anything in life. Most people don't, right? And you're pretty clever in your own opinion, right? I think it's interesting that these are the commandments that Jesus is giving him. Not my sermon today, but I'm just small rap, just a small thing to think about, right? The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have carefully obeyed these laws since my youth. <laughs> 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 uh, 
That's what he thinks. <laughs> right? Jesus fixed his gaze upon the man with tender love. I love you. And said to him, Yet there is still one thing you're in your lacking. Go and sell all you have and give the money to the poor. Now that's straight on, isn't it? Not missing any point on, on anything. Jesus is straight on with us, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Then all of your treasures will be in heaven. That's, that's why I'm reading this one. That's such a good translation. After you've done this, come back and walk with me. That's what I wanted to take out. The minute, because he was so hooked upon his treasures here on earth. So Jesus is saying to him, if you hold on to that, you won't gain that spiritual life I have intended for you. Right? Completely shocked by Jesus' answer. Have you ever been shocked by Jesus' answer? <laughs> what? <laughs> or circumstances that he's placed you in? I'm shocked every day. He turned and walked away very sad for he was extremely rich. Some translation says that he had a lot of property in the Aramaic. Jesus looked at the faces of his disciples and said, <laughs> Wonder what they look like. Huh? Huh? What? That's impossible. Huh? You can't imagine. <laughs> How hard it is for the wealthy to enter into God's kingdom, to God's kingdom realm. Wealthy means that we hold on to things in our own. Not being that's got nothing to do with money. But it's got to do with what we think makes us something. This uh, rich young ruler, he was so identified with the money and his wealth that he would lose his eternal life. Jesus is so interested in us for coming to and live and abide in the spiritual life and inheritance he has for us. The disciples were startled when they heard this, but Jesus again said to them, children, it is next, next to impossible for those who trust in their riches to find their way into God's kingdom, to trust in their riches, in their riches. So what is your riches? What is it that you're holding on to in yourself? I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about riches in your own. I'm very good at studying. I'm very good at my work. I'm very good at, that's riches. Holding on to that identity in those areas, right? It is easier to stuff a robe through the eye of a needle than for a wealthy person to enter into God's kingdom. That's God is saying it's impossible. You can't put a robe through a needle. That's impossible, right? It's like saying, uh, uh, try to make the cow fly. <laughs> it's impossible. You need God for these things to happen, right? Hmm. But this left them all the more astonished, and they whispered to one another, then who could ever be saved? <laughs> Jesus looked at them and replied, with people it is impossible, but not with God. God makes all things possible. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that. So those treasures in heaven. So the minute that we lose, that we let go of the treasures, the minute that we let go of the wealth that we try to hold on to in ourselves, that's the instant transformation we have in heaven. It's in instantaneous. It happens right away. The minute that we let go of it, when Jesus asks us to, right? That's the minute that we simultaneously, in that instant, gain wealth in heaven. Gain spiritual wealth. Right? Hmm. I think that's so important to understand with this scripture. 
especially this rich young man. Now I'm going to read another one. Luke 18, what's it say? 36. One day a wealthy Jewish noble man of high standing posed his, this question to Jesus. Wonderful Jesus, teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? That was his goal. Remember that. That's his goal. Uh, he's not even talking about anything here on earth. He's talking about eternal life. That means he had some kind of insight into something. Understanding that there is more to life than this, right? Eternal life. How must I live forever? What, what would it take to come into this glorious realm? He must have had some revelation of, it must, of being glorious, otherwise he wouldn't ask of it. Am I right? Not just eternal life, but something beautiful in regard to the ter eternal life, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, why would you call me wonderful when there is only one who is wonderful? And that is God alone. I already went into that one. You already know what is right and what the commandments teach. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not lie, and honor your father and mother. The wealthy man replied, the wealthy leader replied, these are the very things I've been doing for as long as I can remember. <laughs> the carnal is so weak, isn't it? Jesus is actually here saying to him, you know, you actually need me to do those, to fulfill those commandments. You need me, you can't do it in your own. Already here he's, fa he's failing, isn't he? Because he's saying to Jesus, I've done it all. I've done it all. Has he really honored his mother and father in his heart all the time? Isn't that what Jesus is always looking out for? Our heart's position? What does Jesus say? Do not murder. But have you ever hated anyone? Now that's murder in the eyes of Jesus, right? <laughs> so Jesus here saying, telling him, you don't know what you're talking about. He should reply, his, his reply should be, I need a savior, just like the Israelites. I need a savior. I can't figure this one out, right? Jesus is always bringing conviction to us. He's never... His intention for us is never to fall asleep, but always to become more and more awake, less carnal, more spiritual awake. That's his intention for us, right? Oh, how that rich young ruler, wonder what happened afterwards, right? Wonder what thoughts or intentions went through his head, right? Especially when he died. Wonder what happened? We don't know. Ah, Jesus said, there is still one thing you're missing in your life. <laughs> the big one. <laughs> what is that? Asked the man. You must go and sell everything you own and give all the proceeds to the poor. So you will have eternal, tre eternal treasuries, treasures. Then come and follow me. First you must get rid of that in order to follow me. What is Jesus saying? You can't do it like that if you want to walk in my footsteps. You must get rid of your own in order to walk in my footsteps. That's what he's saying, isn't it? <laughs> These words devastated the rich leader, for he was extremely wealthy. Jesus saw his disappointment and looking at, right at him said, it is next to impossible looking right at him. Isn't that beautiful? He is constantly trying to haul him in, isn't he? He's constantly trying to pull him into his net, giving him the opportunity to repent. Isn't that Jesus what it's all about? Constant opportunities to repent so that we will stay close to him, right? It is next to impossible for those who have everything to enter into God's kingdom. Have everything in their own, right? Nothing could be harder. You could compare it to trying to stuff a rope through the eye of a needle. He's looking at him right now, telling him these things. 
Those who heard this said, then who can be saved? Jesus responded, what appears humanly impossible is more possible with God. For God can do what man cannot do. Peter said, Master, see how we left all we have, our houses and our careers to follow you. Jesus replied, now this is, now the rich young ruler is listening to this. Listen to this. Listen to my words. Every, anyone who leaves his home behind and chooses God's kingdom over wife, children, parents, and family, it will come back to him many more times in this lifetime. So he would have gained many more. He's listening to Jesus saying these things, and yet he's walking away. Huh? Because he was hurt in his emotions in that instant. Oh, I'm hurt. Have you ever been hurt <laughs> in your emotions? I, why do you want me to let go of this? And Jesus right away is confirming for him, but I have much more. You think you have a lot now? I have much more for you. <laughs> right? But first there is conviction. First there is the answer and question of repentance, isn't there? In order to gain the wealth, in order to come and to walk with Jesus, right? Because we see that displayed here. And in the age to come, he will inherit even more than that. And he's very, very rich, right? So he will inherit more than that, much more. We don't know how much, but much more, right? He will inherit eternal life. More than that, an eternal life. And we think, we know, the carnal is so weak, isn't it? It tried to frame Jesus into something. One last one here. Matthew um, 19, 16. Then a young man approached Jesus and bowed before him, saying, Wonderful teacher, is there a good work I, can, I have to do to obtain eternal life? Jesus answered, Why would you call me wonderful? God alone is wonderful. And why would you ask what good work you need to do? Keep the commandments and you will enter into the life of God. Keep it. Hold it dear to your heart. Because in that realization, he should have realized, I can't do it. I'm inadequate. I need a Savior. That's what the Israelites should have come to terms with, right? Which one, he asked. He's totally not getting what Jesus is talking about. Jesus said, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie. Honor your father and mother and love those around you as you love yourself. Different translation. But I've always obeyed every one of them without fail. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I am very good. The young man replied, what else do I lack? He's not getting it. He's not getting the importance of it, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, if you really want to be perfect, isn't that, and that's why I'm reading them all, because they have different translations. If you really want to be perfect, we know we can't be perfect. But in Christ, because he is, we can obtain the perfection through Christ. Not that we will ever be, there are some mysteries to what I'm saying right now. But in Christ, we can act and do what he is doing. And by that, become perfect, right? If you really want to be perfect, go now and sell everything you own. Get rid of the things that hold you down. Go now. Do it now, Jesus is saying. Don't wait. Do it now, right? So the things that he's bringing us into con conviction with, do it now. Repent now, right? Get rid of it now. Don't hold on to it, right? 
Give your money to the poor and your treasures will be transferred into heaven. <laughs> Isn't that a great translation? Transferred, it's like money, right? You put it in a bank and then it comes out another place, transferred. What you do here on earth is transferred into heaven. It's like a banking system, right? You put it in the account and then you can take out the deposit in heaven. Mm. Then come back and follow me for the rest of your life. Wow, that's an opportunity. He missed it. He missed everything that Jesus had because he did not want to repent. That's the beauty of his love because Jesus could very easily have done it within him so he would have repented, right? But he didn't because Jesus wants us to choose him. Now that's love, isn't it? That's freedom, isn't it? That's compassion, isn't it? I'm giving you the choice. Here it is, what do you choose? Yes, I could just with instantaneous do something within you, but then it's not love. Then, then it's him making the choice over us, isn't it? He wants us to choose him, that's love. Just like he chose us, right? I like that. When the young man heard these words, he walked away sad, for he had great wealth. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, Listen, do you understand how difficult it is for the rich to enter into heaven's kingdom's realm? In fact, it is easier to stuff a heavy rope through the eye of a needle than it is for, for the wealthy to enter into God's kingdom's realm. Stunned and bewildered, his disciples asked, then who in the world can possibly be saved? Jesus saying, I'm the door. I'm standing here right in front of you. Look at me, <laughs> right? Look at me. I'm the one you need. I've just explained to you how it works. And I'm giving you very clear understanding of what it is that you need to get rid of, it doesn't he? It's very clear what he's asking of him, isn't it? That's his, com that's his compassion, mm -hmm. showing us where we're holding on. Compassion in his sight is not just stroking our hair, you know, oh, you poor thing, no. He's giving us the opportunity because he knows through him we can repent. We can come into repentance. Mm -hmm. Jesus is always out there saying, choose me, isn't he? In every situation in life, he's saying, choose me. Choose me. I know what it looks like, but choose me. I know it's hard, but choose me. I know it's difficult. I know you can't see your way out of it. Choose me. I know there is pressure on your life, but choose me, mm -hmm. right? It's always a choice. Do you stay with Jesus or do you walk away? This man, clearly, he just walked away. It's the same for us on the inside. Do you choose Jesus on the inside or do you choose your own thinking? Do you choose your own emotions? Do you choose your own hurt? Do you choose your own pity party? Do you choose your own, the list is long. Do you choose to fear? Do you, cho do you choose to give in? It's all about that. Fear may be there. Emotions are there. But do you give in? That's the question. He gave in to his wealth. He gave in to the emotions of holding on to his wealth because that was his identity. Jesus is calling him in, hauling him in his, in his net, saying, I got a new life for you, but you have to choose me. Otherwise, it won't be what I've intended it for it to be, because I want you to choose me out of love, and I want you to trust me. It's all about that too, isn't it? When we love someone, we trust them, don't we? Isn't that what it's all about? Love and trust. Yes. He brings convictions in order to set us free. Doesn't he? <laughs> he 
He could have given the rich young ruler a complete revelation of everything. But he didn't. Because Jesus wants us to choose him first, out of love. And that applies in every situation that we're in with him. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Before anything changes, we have to choose him. Mm -hmm. It's all spiritual. It's always spiritual first. Right? Never physical. Never physical circumstances. It's never that. It's always spiritual. And then the physical circumstances changes. Right? God said, let there be light. Spiritual first. Boom. And there was light. Right? Spiritual always comes before physical circumstances. He's giving him a chance to repent. Repentance is always a matter of choice when the Lord shows us our faults. It's a matter of choice. He's not going to twist your arm around. He's going to show it to you, and it's just going to feel like a small, still voice on the inner, and you know in your conviction, you know in your conscience, mm -mm, i got to change this. It's very, very small on the inside. And here Jesus actually is saying it very out loud in front of the rich young man. He's not hiding anything, Jesus. He's not in that sense of mystery. It's plain and simple. Choose me and I will give it to you. But you have to choose me. Otherwise, you will fall. That's what it's all about. You will fall away and you will fall. You might have riches here, but that doesn't matter if you end up in hell, does it? Right? Doesn't matter, does it? If you were so rich here on earth, who cares if you're rich if you don't know Jesus? In the afterlife, you walk around in hell, just like the rich man. The Bible talks about that rich man, right? Bless me. No? What? Now, what was his name? The rich man. The, the poor man was sitting. It's stuck on my shoe. The poor man was sitting at the gate, begging. And every day the rich man came, but he didn't give him anything, right? He ended up in hell. And the poor man ended up in heaven. Very interesting. Do you think it was because he was poor? No. It was because his heart was attached more to God than anything else. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that when you don't have something in some certain areas, you look very fast to Jesus? <laughs> and in those areas where it goes really well, you look to yourself. That's the carnal way, isn't it? It's so weak, right? Mm -hmm. So that rich man, he ended up in hell. And then he saw the poor man in the bosom of Abraham, and he called to him, Help! Go on, go on, go and tell my brothers what they need to do. Right? Hey, buddy, too late. Then it's too late. Right? That's why we have constantly, every day Jesus serves us opportunities and brings conviction to us. Have you noticed that? Well, he does that with me every day, not, not one thing, many things during the day, right? Yeah. Do you choose me or do you choose? Just thinking, just normal thinking that goes on in the mind. Do, you choose, do I choose him or do I choose the fear? Do I choose him or do I choose to trust my own way of understanding this situation? Do I trust him or do I trust my emotions? When I think about certain things, am I right? So every day we have constant opportunities to choose Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. I can put it another way, that's purgation. Mm -hmm. I can put it another way, that's sanctification. That's how we get cleansed, right? That's how we grow in him. Let me read another one for you. Totally different one but still in the realm of bringing conviction. 
John 18, verse 1. Jesus walked up to the Mount of Olives near the city where he spent the night. Then at dawn, Jesus appeared in the temple courts again. And soon all the people gathered around to listen to his words. So he sat down and taught them. Then in the middle of his teaching, the religious scholars and the Pharisees broke through the crowd and brought a woman who had been caught in the act of committing adultery and made her stand in the middle of everyone. Then they said to Jesus, Teacher, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Doesn't Moses' law command us to stone to death a woman like this? Which is true. <laughs> Tell us what do you say we should do with her? They were only testing Jesus because they hoped to trap him with his own words and accuse him of breaking the laws of Moses. But Jesus didn't answer them. Instead, he simply bent down and wrote in the dust with his finger. Angry, they kept ins insisting that he answer their question. So Jesus stood up and looked at them and said, Let's have the man who has never had a sinful desire throw the first stone at her. And then he bent down again and wrote some more words in the dust. We don't know if it was words, actually. Upon hearing that, her accusers only slowly left the crowd one at a time, beginning with the oldest to the youngest, with a convinced conscience. Oh, excuse me, with a convicted conscience. There you have it again. Bringing conviction. That's what Jesus is all about. Now, Jesus, he could have just wiped out the Pharisees. But that's not love, isn't it? He's actually giving them an opportunity to what? Repent. Right? To wake up. What it is it that we're doing? How come I think I'm so grand in my own? Right? That's a choice to repent. Isn't that compassion? Even the hardest of the hardest. He's constantly trying to haul them in. These are whales. The Pharisees is like hauling a whale in. Big, heavy, and you just... Right? But he's doing what, he's, what he was called to do. Showing compassion. Bringing forth conviction. Giving them an opportunity for a better life. That's what Jesus is all about. It's an opportunity for a better life, right? Everything we go through, that's the opportunity to grow into a better life with Him, right? Here, yes, but also in heaven, right? Eternal life, right? Until finally Jesus was left alone with a woman still standing there in front of Him. So He stood back up and said to her, Dear woman, where are your accusers? I've set you free. He's not only trying to set the Pharisees free, but he also is setting her free. Have you noticed that everywhere Jesus go, he constantly is trying to set people free. He's not missing out on one single person in the room. I just love, isn't that amazing about Jesus? And we think we're something. Jesus is constantly trying to haul people in, even the Pharisees, even the guilty, even the tax collectors. And he's very straight on with them, isn't he? Because he don't want them to miss this point, right? Come into my house, he's saying. Is there no one here to condemn you? Looking around, she replied, I see no one, Lord. She recognizes him. Wonder how she felt. 
knowing what she's done was not right. But sometimes when you feel so low with yourself, you do the stupidest things, don't you? You, th you think you're not worth anything. I've known a few women who's been a prostitute, and I know why they became a prostitute. Because they thought there was nothing else in life than that, pretty much. And then they could make some money, right? Now that's low. Jesus is saying to her, do you know your value? You should study the value of the soul for the Lord. It's actually perfect, whole, and complete. It's so perfect. Jesus is very occupied with where we land, where we end up. She knew that what she was doing was not right. That's us. When we, when we feel low, we do these stupidest things, don't we? And we hide, and the more we try to hide in ourselves, the more stupid we, the situation turn out. Am I right? And the more you try to do it in your own, the worse the situation become. Am I right? <laughs> and you think, how on earth did I end up here? And then when you end up, she ended up there many times. And the more times she ended up there, at some point she's just like, I'm not worth anything. I can might as well just do this. Have you ever been there? Let me just settle with this. Whatever that is, right? Let me just, I'm just used to crumbs. Right? She knew what she was doing was wrong. Sometimes we know what we're doing is wrong, but how do we change it? Right? Now here Jesus is saying to her, here Jesus is showing us how. Let's go to Jesus. <laughs> Don't, you got to get a word from the Lord before you do something. If you're in a situation and it's very, how can I put it, it's important and it's, it has, certain, has a certain outcome for your life, you should wait for Jesus to move on the situation. Don't you dare in your own. We see how it ended up with her, right? Jesus said, then I certainly don't condemn you either. Go, and from now on be free from life of sin. So Jesus sets us free, and then he's saying, don't do it again, right? Don't, because you're going to mess up your life, right? <laughs> so repentance is always a matter of choice when the Lord shows us our faults. Jesus showed the Pharisees their faults. I know each of you have sinned, right? Who do you think you are, right? That's what he's saying to them but in a loving way. I'm showing you this so that you'll choose me. Right? So that you'll choose love. They should have chosen love in this situation. Who's love? Jesus, right? <laughs> but they chose hate. They chose to hold on to their own. That's always the choice for us. has never sinned. In some translation, translation it says, uh, let the first one who has never sinned throw the first stone. But that he's telling them that what she's doing is not right, but the way you treat her, that's what he's saying to them, is wrong. Mm -hmm. What did that woman need? Come on. Compassion, love, understanding, help, right? to get out of that horrible situation. Now the Pharisees and the scholars were quite rich. They could have easily helped her, right? Is that an interesting scenario? It's the rich one and the poor one. You're only a prostitute if you don't have anything. Am I right? Mm. But the way you treat her is wrong because you know You've had many sinful desires in your life. Right? That's what he's saying to them. You know all the sinful desires that you had in your life. Many of them. 
And the elders started to walk out first because they remembered they had a whole list, right? Listen, there's na da 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 and they're like, okay, I'm out of here. And then the young one, they think, hey, yeah, I had maybe one. <laughs> That's young people, right? They never think they have many faults, you know. They're quite perfect in their own. And young is not a matter of age. Let me just say that. Here it's depicted as age, but young is a, is a matter of being new in the Lord, right? Spiritually matured, new. Jesus is an invitation. What he is doing is always an invitation to change, to become more and better, to become a more and better human. Am I right? To become, to grow into his likeness. That's always his invitation, isn't it? For us to grow. Well, it should be. Jesus brought such conviction physically and most spiritually. Because where does conviction hit us? Physically? No. In the heart, isn't it? It says that he brought convictions to the Pharisees. That means something happened. Can you imagine that? Because when Jesus speaks, there is light. Let me just take that one out. When Jesus speaks, there is light. So he's separating what is death and what is life within them. He's showing them directly what you're doing right there. Mm -mm, not life, death. Here, I'm giving you the opportunity to choose life. Right? That's what he's serving right in front of them. Because when he speaks, life proceeds. Right? Not death, just life. And when life proceeds in an area of death, something comes to life so we can see where we're wrong, right? So we can see where we're not acting in accordance with his love. And Jesus is always trying to make people to grow into more compassion. That's what he wanted with the Pharisees. Hello, where is your compassion for this woman? Do you think maybe that some of the Pharisees or the leaders had already slept with her? Could be. We don't know. Most likely, because how did they know she was a prostitute? I'm just throwing thoughts out. Isn't that the weakness of the carnal? It's so self-righteous. So much lacking compassion and understanding. Am I right? And Jesus is constantly trying to make people to come together into compassion, to come into the unity of compassion and of his love, right? We see that. That's what he's always trying to do, also with the rich young ruler. And then he, after with the rich young ruler, he explains to his disciples, this can only be done with God, right? Always trying to create that unity, right? Always. So that means he touches our hearts in his conviction. That's spiritual. It's always spiritual first. You cannot change something if you're not convicted that you need to change. Am I right? Right? Simple as. Now Jesus is the recipe for life. Sometimes we can change because we know that's the carnal. We change something because we know this is not really good. But if we do it in our own, we're not changing it into life. We're just changing the scenery, but it's still death. Right? Now, when Jesus speaks to us and speaks to our heart, you know this, how shocked you've been sometimes when Jesus said something and you were convinced that you were right? And you were convinced that what you thought was from Jesus? Am I right? And then he said, no, that's not it. You need to do it like that. And then you'll be like, Oh, okay. You might even be a little scared to, for their change, right? Might be very scared, right? That's Jesus. He's hauling you into life. He's haul, constantly trying to haul us into life in every situation. And sometimes we're so far out in the black woods that we think, because we're having a bonfire there, that we think what it's doing is right because we have seen some small fire in the woods. That's not life. 
in the black woods? So Jesus is saying, come on out of the black woods. Come on out of the death of the valley, shadow of the valley of the dead. Come on out. But because we've lived in that area for so many years, for such a long time, that's become the norm. And we think it's life, right? And then suddenly Jesus comes and he's saying, no, 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 come on out of here. And, and the cardinal might be going, but I'm actually scared of coming out to see the light. I'm actually scared of living in the glorious life that you provided for me. I want to, but I'm scared, right? That's the carnal. So Jesus, in his compassion, he shows compassion, right? He waits for us. He helps us put down the fire. He's not going to sit here anymore. Takes us by the hand and lifts us out, doesn't he? In all circumstances, right? That's what he did with the prostitute. Because she knew what she was doing. Mm -mm, no good. I know it's no good. Right? Otherwise, prostitute won't hide. No. It's not something that's really flashable. Anyway, he touches us spiritually first by the conviction, right? So when that, is, when that hits us, we know, okay, what do, I, what do I do? And then Jesus speaks, sin no more. He's saying, don't do it again. Right? In this, he's always asking us to lose something that affects our lives for the better. Did you understand that? It's actually quite a good sentence. He's always asking us to lose something, get rid of that, if you want to live in that area. You can't keep doing what you think is good in your own. You gotta get rid of that attitude. You gotta get rid of that doing that thing, physical thing, whatever. I just read two stories for you one determines a physical thing he was attached to, and the, one, the other one was more of a spiritual matter, an emotional matter, right? And to, to both of them, he's saying, you've got to get rid of that. It's no good. You lose your life, right? In order to, to gain life. The carnal thinks it has life, but actually it just has death. She had to stop prostituting herself to give herself away for nothing, right? When you prostitute yourself, you give yourself away for nothing. Because money is nothing in the realm of God. Because God owns, everything is God. And the most precious thing for him is our heart, is our soul, and where we end up. Because he so much longed to be with us in heaven. That we, we, we don't have any understanding of how much. We think we do, but we don't. Have you ever given yourself away for nothing? We can all raise our hands, can't we? Just to feel somewhat included just to feel somewhat in, just to feel somewhat belong, just to have some sort of life. Am I right? Because he is very concerned about a spiritual condition. That's his, that's his, high, his high priority for us. Because when God is spirit, am I right? He's also physical, but his spirit. And his spirit is love. That's beautiful to think about, right? Then all the spiritual affairs doesn't become something far away because spirituality is actually love in that sense then. Then it boils down to something that we can grasp and hold on to and understand and act out, right? Toward ourselves. <laughs> you gotta start with ourselves. Because if we think we can fix someone else and not starting with ourselves, mm, forget that. Because these two people, they involve themselves. Have you noticed? And when Jesus speaks to the Pharisees, he's pointing to them, saying, you, you need to change, isn't he? He's not saying they will change, then you can change. That's not what he's doing. And he's saying to the prostitute, you need to change. And he's saying to the rich young ruler, you need to change. And he's saying to his disciples, you need to change to understand that everything is possible with God. 
Right? And the rich young ruler had to get rid of some physical means in order to come into heaven. To come into this place that God had called him into. Jesus gave generously, right? But we fail like the rich young ruler. Oh, I have to get rid of that. And then I lose my position. Wonder what he thought. My friend, have you ever thought that? If Jesus asked you to something, when Jesus asked me to start this church and all that, you know, in the cardinal there are many thoughts. I will lose my friends. I will lose my position. I will lose everything that I build up. That's what he was thinking. I would lose uh, maybe the position at the border in that company. I would lose, right? I would lose all the people coming to me and asking for advice. I would lose the uh, position of being a counselor, the wealthy counselor, because the Bible says he was a teacher, a leader, right? So he was leading someone. He for sure would lose all of that. And Jesus was asking and inviting him, come into my realm, walk with me, right? We don't understand the ways of Jesus. But if we could just obey, right? When there is a conviction, knowing it's out of compassion from him to us. It's out of his love from him to us when there is conviction, right? And it hurts sometimes so much in the carnal. Mm -hmm. But just hold on to Jesus, mm -hmm. right? It's no good of going back of trying the old way. That's over. That life is over. That train has gone. It's left the station. It's no more. Don't stand looking for it when the train of Jesus is right next to you. Right? Just hob aboard, just, that's his compassion. Always the invitation into lose something in ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that what? We will become and grow into becoming more lovable people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just wonderful people in ourselves, but that we show love, just like Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't he? He's always about showing love for people, isn't he? giving them the opportunity, right? Even the people who were standing there to stone the woman, they had the opportunity to think as well, right? Mm -hmm. What am I doing, man? Mm -hmm. That could have been my <coughs> daughter <coughs> when I treated her bad. Mm -hmm. Do you think some of the Pharisees later, they were doing something stupid with their children once in a while? I think so. Do you think maybe they thought when they saw her, she looks just like my daughter, or she looks just like my sister, or she's the one who knows my so-and-so and so. And I know she did have a, a, I know she didn't have a good life. I know she had a hard life. The carnal is always so self-righteous that it's always out there trying to condemn others first. Am I right? That's the nature of the carnal. So when we see that in others, now the question is then, just like Jesus, can we show compassion? Ah, why? They were trying to trap Jesus because they were afraid to lose their position, right? So they wanted to get rid of him. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Power and position in the carnal, isn't it? So they wanted him out of the way so they could keep their position. Here's another point. If you walk with Jesus, I never use the word never, but you will never fail. Even in that hard situation, those hard situations, especially with a woman, he never failed. He gave the most prominent answer, right? Something that they were like, they couldn't speak anything against, right? Because not only do you walk with Jesus, but you also walk with the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? So when Jesus speaks, when Jesus is in the room, something should happen, right? 
So when he speaks into that situation, life is brought forth. That also means they were brought into their conviction of their own and she was set free, right? Now that's life, isn't it? The invitation for them should have been, wow, what I did was so wrong. I'm sorry, Lord, forgive me. I repent, right? <laughs> Do you think maybe, we don't know, did she go back and prostitute herself? We don't know. Right? But the minute that Jesus speaks, then I don't condemn you. Now go and sin no more. That's the minute that she was free. Because Jesus is speaking a rhema word. A rhema word is a now word. A rhema word is a now word with life for that situation that you're in. That's the way Jesus speaks. We got to understand it's not just a person, Jesus, standing there. It means because the Bible says that the word is like a sword, two-edged sword, cuts through marrow and bone right into the heart. Right? That's what the Bible says in Hebrew. It cuts through everything. When Jesus walks in the room, it's like this. Right? It's not like you can't hide. You just hang over in your own. Mm -mm. You know very well where Jesus had put place the conviction on you, where you need to change in order to have more life of him, more of his love. Right? Just another small point. Jesus is pointing to the Pharisees where they're wrong. He's trying to make them listen. Hello? <laughs> right? <laughs> he's trying to wake them up. That's what he's always doing, isn't it? Because he is life. When there is life, death cannot stay in the room. Have you noticed that with Jesus? When you have a hard day, a hard time, and you cling to him, suddenly you feel life. What does that mean? It means you feel you have, your faith is restored in him. It means that you can get up again, arise in your inner. Am I right? That's what life means. And then you are fresh to go out. Have your circumstances changed? Maybe not. But because you're with Jesus, life starts to flourish, right? And then you'll know at some point, whatever it is, it will change in the right timing. God, Jesus always wants us to trust him and to walk in faith. That's what it's all about. Trust me and walk in faith. So she was forgiven for the stupid thing that she had done. Jesus is trying to bring in conviction to the Pharisees and the leaders. Jesus is, is telling the rich young ruler, stop this one thing that you're doing and showing to him, you're not so great in your own, you're not actually doing so good as you think you are. Isn't that Jesus? <laughs> Just because of that fact and the way he is bringing forth that conviction, it should make us come closer to him, right? And the disciples, they don't understand anything. Then who can come into heaven? You can't put a rope through a needle. That's impossible. That's right. But with God, all things are possible. He's like full on displaying in high neon lights, you need me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I think that's it. Was it helpful? Was it good? But it's always spiritual first. It's always spiritual first. It's never this physical circumstances. Jesus might use, and he does, the physical circumstances to change our attitude. Mm. To show you where you're at. That's like a mirror. He's constantly placing mirrors in front of you. Where are you at in that area? And you'll be like, oh, I don't like that. Where are you at in that area? Oh, I'm not so good. And he's asking us to change so that we will become more like him. Because that's the ultimate freedom to walk like Jesus did, right? But it's always spiritual. Have you noticed the minute that you change something spiritual in your life, that means what I'm talking about here is that the minute that you start doing the things that he brought conviction to your heart with, have you noticed that some circumstances, they just change right away? <laughs> and you'll be like, where did they go? It's not the circumstances. It's all spiritual. Because there is also a warfare that goes on. Just a small side rabbit on that one. But when we don't do the thing that Jesus is asking us to do, we will leave an open door opportunity for the enemy. And the enemy then ha has a, 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 a chance to put in his foot in our lives to make us stumble. And sometimes he succeeds, right? And the minute that we do what God is asking us to do, he, the door is closed. He can't, he can't come in. So that's another thing to take into consideration in all circumstances, right? Not just you, but if you do the things that God asks you to do, repent and change and, and, and mostly step into the areas where you feel most fear. Well, can I handle that? You know it's from God, but do I dare? I need to, yes. Because God wants you to grow. Have you noticed that God only often places us in new situations so that we'll grow? Right? Have you noticed the minute that <laughs> we go on repeat in our lives, everything turns green and we won't grow? Have you noticed that? It's just repeat, repentance, and it's comfort for the carnal man, isn't it? Right? Everything that's repetitive is comfort for the carnal man, right? It's all spiritual. But Jesus is always asking us, inviting us in to take us out of that comfort zone. Whatever that may be, right? Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right, I think that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you to move on these words, Lord, in each of us, Lord. Now think about this. I just had this thought. Think about this with the, with the woman. When he said, go and sin no more, what do you think her first thought would be? How am I going to get money? How am I going to live? Right? Well, you know who was in front of her? Jesus. We have him. We can turn to him. Right? That's such a great picture. Isn't it? And with the rich ruler, he's saying, he's giving him the prescription of how to live a glorious life. Get rid of that. Come back and follow me. That's simple. <laughs> right? But Jesus always gives us the opportunity to figure out how. To come to him and ask him, right? I think that would be the first thought in her head. Because you only prostitute yourself for money. So she would be, might be thinking, how am I going to get that money? How am I going to make a living? And she's standing in front of the Lord. Do you think maybe she asked him? Right? We always have that opportunity. 
Sometimes he serves us things and he's saying, get rid of that, stop doing that. But do we also turn to him and say, Lord, then what, else, then what do I do then? Right? That should be our next question to him. Not to go into our own. Because the story stops here with her. It, it feels like when you read the story that she was just left then on your own. Go and sin no more, he said. She might have turned to him and said, then what do I do? How am I going to make a living, Lord? Right? We have that option. And we should grab that option with all might. First there's conviction, then there's repentance, and then we should ask him, what's the next step, right? In all situations, right? All right. Just a thought I have. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's let's take communion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross, Lord, that you gave yourself away, enabling us to walk with you and live with you. This we take into remembrance. You may eat your bread. Lord, for not holding on to your own life, because if you did, we, we would not have any life. We would not gain any life, Lord. Thank you for letting your life be broken up and let the blood would be spilled and, and, fl and flow, Lord, so that we would gain life. Thank you, Jesus. You may drink. Yes, so